Thank you. Thank you. Um, Arun and um, all the other organizers, and thank you all for um, coming out um, and being here. And of course, um, to um, the purple one, Prince, uh, many thanks as well. So um, the title of my talk is, I don't, I don't think it's quite visible, Computer Blue, Prince, New Wave, and Black Feminists. Um, and um, so the first part of the talk is thinking about, and it's part of the, my project about R&B music, um, Prince's relationship to New Wave and um, synth pop, and then there's um, another part about Camille and, um, um, and um, Black Feminist, which sort of comes, um, comes out of that. Um, <clears throat> so my point is, this thing is really, okay. I hope I don't bump into that. Um, that Prince's use in the 1980s of British synth pop and new wave aided in his experimentation and re, um, with and reformulation of reigning codes of gender, sexuality, and blackness during um, that era. While new wave and synth pop um, appeared as hyper white in the early 1980s, um, it, it was as its core a reformulation of blue eyed soul for the age um, um, of synthesized um, electronic instrumentation and MTV. So basically in the project what I'm arguing is that new wave slash synth pop is black music and that Prince is one of its main architects um, to make a very, very long story um, um, I'm short. Um, and um, given the genre's amalgamation of black music, white queer masculinity, and synthetic pop funk. In addition, in the United States, before synth pop became um, a mainstream phenomenon referred to as the second British invasion, it was championed primarily by black radio DJs, such as Frankie Crocker in New York, the electrifying Mojo in Detroit, and Herb Kent in Chicago. Um, Prince's crossover success in the 1980s um, took different paths than those, um, those by um, um, other black artists, I'm arguing, um, particularly because of his um, engagement with and reformulations of new wave and um, um, synth pop. Um, and what really distinguished Prince's engagement and the various bands and sub bands and all those kinds of things um, with synth pop is that it was not a one off thing. Um, many other artists um, tried, um, most obviously in Rockwell's and Ready for the World's faux British accents, but also in Detroit, Cybertron, in Chicago, Jimmy Principal, et cetera, and um, um, so on. And what Prince did, with so, as with so many other things, is that he made these genres his own. Um, and he turned new wave and synth pop out by infusing and recalibrating them with his own version of funk and R&B, um, therefore unearthing the genre's um, constitutive um, um, blackness. Um, and what I also want to, and I'm just going to talk through this um, briefly, what also <laughs> is important was that there was a consistent visual look, and we've heard a number of presentations um, making reference to this and um, I'm discussing this. So it wasn't only consistency in sound, it was a consistency in the visual iconography, in the costuming, in the makeup, in the music videos, et cetera, and so on, in the period from, I would say, um, Dirty Mind to, um, um, to, to Love, um, 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 Sexy. And um, so yeah, so this is Prince before New Wave, and then we sort of see the more punk-oriented first version on Controversy and Dirty Mind, and then um, we see that transmuting um, to the more synth-pop, um, new romantic-oriented um, um, versions. Let me just go back. And what I also, um, I'm just going to, everybody knows the image of Sly and the Family Stone, and this is sort of part and parcel of the Prince history, is that he modeled particularly the revolution on the multiraciality of Sly and the Family Stone. But my point is that a number of British New Wave groups and U.S. New Wave groups also had this multiracial configuration, and Prince also drew on, um, 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 on um, 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 that. Um, and I would also say that the height of this, um, and here are some more images with the new romanticism, um, that the height of this comes in um, the second feature film, um, <coughs> excuse me, under the, um, un under the um, 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 cherry um, um, moon. <clears throat> 
and what Prince does in, um, um, in, in this film, um, among a number of um, things, is that he definitely appropriates and lampoons the idea of old world European decadence that had been so popular in British um, um, synth pop and um, 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 new wave, um, beginning with David Bowie's Thin White Duke um, um, persona, um, thereby unsettling the whiteness that usually un accompanies this by continually highlighting um, both his and co-stars um, Jerome Benton's performative black queerness. Um, so that he takes this um, imagined old world European landscape of the French Riviera and fuses it with the iconography of 1920s Harlem, extending the long line of African American expatriates in France, particularly jazz musicians. Um, Under the Cherry Moon also recalls the black male homosocial um, worlds conjured by Claude McKay, um, particularly in Blan um, Blanjo. Um, it is Blanjo too, but Banjo, which is set, of course, in the south of France. And finally, I would say that we should also view the film's um, sumptuous um, black and white um, um, imagery as a clear precursor, a precursor to um, Isaac Julian's 1989 groundbreaking breaking, um, the whole B-L-A-C-K and queer thing is just um, all mixed up right now. So um, I'm going to try and keep it separate, but probably not. So in any case, looking for Langston, the queering of the Harlem Renaissance, that this, I think, um, 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 under the cherry moon definitely served as a visual um, model um, 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 to it. Um, <clears throat> And moving away from this a little bit, what Prince also did throughout the 1980s through his engagement with New Wave and um, um, synth pop is that he um, um, embraced um, various forms of visual and sonic androgyny and gender queerness. Um, and what I'm arguing is that Prince was not really androgynous, but that he was a purveyor of black feminists. And I will talk about what I mean by that in a little bit. Um, and what Prince did I'm going to skip over this. Nope. It hurts, but you know. Um, is that on the one hand, he drew on Visage, Adam Ant, Gary Newman, but also extended the long line of normative, um, um, non normative um, black masculinities and femininities that we see in figures such as um, Little Richard, Gladys Bentley, um, Jackie Shane, Sylvester, or um, um, Grace, um, 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 Gra Grace Jones. And. Um, and what he also did, and this, this goes in line with the, um, 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 the previous panel, is that he consistently experimented with the gendering of his voice, both naturally and uh, by, uh, via technological, um, um, by, via technological um, um, means. And while more traditional R&B sounds dominated pr um, Prince's first two albums, all the tracks were sung in falsetto. <clears throat> which had a venerable tradition in R&B that includes Marvin Gaye, Smokey Robinson, Ronald Isley, Philip Bailey, Al Green, Eddie Kendricks, um, albeit with the proviso or proviso that in those early years, Princess Falsetto did not enjoy the benefit of being anchored in the performance of cis heteropatriarchal masculinity as with these other R&B singers. In this way, in the early years of his career and the use of his falsetto, even though sonically it's not the same, but in terms of what it signaled in terms of his gender performance, he was a lot closer to Sylvester than these other um, um, figures. And that is something that changes over the course of the um, 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 19, um, 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 80s. Um, and I mean, um, I haven't really um, written this out extensively, but one of the things that I also want to think about is the, um, um, the kind of what I'm calling um, the ungendering of also the black female voice in figures such as Anita Baker, Grace Jones, Ruth Pointer, Tony Braxton, that all work within lower non-feminine seeming registers and how that can be seen as both analogous but also a really different way of ungendering the black um, um, voice as the, um, um, as, as the um, um, falsetto. And I did not know until recently that Grace Jones, um, at least now she tells the story, she um, said that she felt that she could sing in her natural lower voice after she heard After Eight, um, which was um, Anita Baker's um, 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 group. So we might have never had Grace Jones's recording career if it was not for Anita Baker, which is a um, great thing to imagine. Um, <clears throat> so um, beginning with, um, oh, let me, I'm skipping over here. Um, so 
He does this again in both the visuals and in the, um, um, in the sounds, but also in the, um, um, in the um, singing voice. And um, of course here, the more traditional version um, with I Wanna Be Your Lover. We turn it up a little bit more. Love the, <laughs> I always love the audacity that he starts with, I ain't got no money, but then he wants to be your mother and your sister to be uh, beyond your lover. I'm like, okay. Um, in any case, so we see that changing a little bit um, with um, controversy that sort of combines the kind of angularity of new wave rhythms, like the sort of specific whiteness of new wave rhythms, with his um, 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 falsetto. Controversy. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then beginning in 1999, Prince not only makes synthesizers and drum machines, particularly his beloved Lindrum, the focal point of the band's sound, um, but he also begins his long-standing lyrical and conceptual focus on changing technological landscapes. He correspondingly moves away from um, singing um, exclusively in falsetto, instead deploying his natural quote-unquote register, um, and also this kind of deep robotic craftwork Gary Newman-esque sounding um, voice. Um, and Zap and Roger Trapman, of course, too. <laughs> There's a lot more. There's a lot more. Um, similarly, Prince continually experimented with different registers of his voice on the many partnerships with female musicians um, that we've also heard about. Um, for instance, in the way that he deploys his lower register um, as a harmonic counterpoint to Sheila E., but also his falsetto at the end of um, A Love um, a Bizarre as a counterpoint to Sheila E.'s um, um, voice. And um, one of the things that I find interesting, particularly on A Love Bazaar and a few other um, songs, is that it's, you very, very rarely hear ma male background singers working with a female um, 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 lead um, um, singer. And Prince was really, really adept of making use of that um, counter, um, 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 counter balance. The only other person that I know is the, um, the partnership that Mariah Carey had with Trey Lorenz for many, many years. But we'll leave that alone for now. You can hear Prince doubling, shadowing Sheila um, in the in the background there. In the lower register, and then later the falsetto will appear to accent um, the, um, um, the falsetto. Um, yes. Uh, um, and um, of course, most famously, he. Um, <laughs> Like Daphne Brooks and talk over Prince now. 
um, which I generally don't do, but that he sort of creates this feminine sounding alter ego here um, um, on, on this track and a number of other tracks. And also um, that he uses his background vocals in a similar way to the Sheila E one on Martika's Love that will be, um, um, that, that will be done. And while Stevie Wonder, Sly Stone, George Clinton had engineered their vocal tracks in similar ways in the 1970s, um, Prince, again, consistently played with this gendering of the, um, 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 the voice. Another thing that I'm also thinking about is that how he often used um, what is technically referred to as non-lexical voca uh, vocables, like la, 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 he, 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 et cetera, and so on, woo-hoo, um, in his um, falsetto background, um, 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 vocalizing um, on 17 Days, the extended version of I Would Die For You, and of course on Purple Rain, the ending of the Purple Rain. Um, and then <clears throat> also there's a um, um, beginning with Erotic City, he starts to technologically manipulate his voice to get that more, um, 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 the sped up, what will then be called Camille sounding um, voice. And since I'm in a room of um, Prince knowledgeables, I'm not gonna explain the actual um, um, technological, um, um, how that, um, that happens. Um, but actually I do wanna talk about Camille. Um, so, in any case, not surprisingly, Prince took um, this um, gender fuck a few steps um, further because um, excessiveness um, was the name of the game. Uh, by constructing an alter ego for this high-pitched um, um, voice named Camille. And by disguising um, vocalist dancer Cat Glover's face on the cover of the Sign of, um, Sign of the Times um, single as a um, um, feminine version of, uh, of, of Prince, making it seem as if it was Prince in femme drag on the, um, um, on the um, um, cover. And of course, Prince also planned um, to um, release a whole album of Camille, um, 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 Camille, Camille records um, or, or Camille songs um, entitled The Rebirth of the um, um, Flesh, according to some. Um, and while the whole intersex, Herculean Barban um, interpretation is cute, um, and I don't necessarily think um, is wrong. I do really want to highlight that Prince always refers to Camille with the masculine pronoun, always. There's not once where he calls Camille she or even it, quote unquote, or something or they. Um, and, um, in the Love Sexy Tour book, which I'll talk about, and of course, most famously in If I Was Your Girlfriend. Uh... Sorry. That one really hurts. <clears throat> so, what I want to um, highlight here is that rather than conjuring up stra um, a straight up femininity or womanhood and in line with Lisa Coleman's now famous description of Prince as a fancy lesbian, um, that I want to um, highlight Camille's and um, Prince's gender play throughout his career as a particular performance of black feminists. That is a decidedly exalted and black queer version of femininity. Um, and I hear, um, this is where I take my um, definition of um, 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 black feminists from um, um, Chelsea um, um, Frazier in a forthcoming um, um, essay. And what I really like about this definition is that A, it is rooted in a black queer community definition of femme, just with one um, 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 M, um, and B, that it allows us to think about a whole range of femininities without necessarily anchoring them in particular kinds of bodies and I think it also gets us away from necessarily having to argue that Prince was cu uh, um, cure, um, queer in a particular kind of way I told you I was having problems with that word um, 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 moves us away from that and for me really highlights how he was continually performing certain acts of black queer feminist and femininity over and over again that is not necessarily indicative of any kind of sexual identity, which I will get to in a second, that he had or may have um, had. 
And it's precisely what Fraser here says as the intricacies of a broader range of feminine subjectivities as they intersect with trans, cis, um, non-binary, binary, queer, hetero, female persons, and male persons I, um, identities um, that, that, that I'm interested in um, thinking about um, 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 Prince and, um, and Camille. And um, so what I would like to do is to think about black feminists as an analytic in the same way that, um, 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 that Barbara Smith um, thinks about um, black um, lesbian feminism, um, feminist approaches in her reading of Sula and towards a black feminist criticism. And I'm happy to talk about it um, later, but I don't want to get um, 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 bog bogged down in it, which means that there doesn't necessarily have to be a representation of lesbian acts or lesbians in a particular kind of text in order to read it in a black lesbian, black feminist lesbian um, um, fashion, right? And this is what I'm saying about black feminists and um, 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 prints. Um, and I would go so far that even his performance of masculinity um, was always black femme. As Ekundayu Afoloyan remarks, from his purple suits to press and curls and high-pitched moans, Prince consistently showed us black femme extravagance, end quote. There we go. In the 1989 tour booklet, Camille, Prince and the Voice of Camille writes, Camille found a new color, the color black, the strongest hue of them all. He painted a picture, and this is of course something that recurs over and over in Prince lyrics, right? Paint a picture. Um, um, the Vogue fantasy, end quote. Camille's expressions literalize black life as artistic praxis through the language of painting and the mobilization of the materiality of the color black. Black is and black ain't. Shout out to both Marlon Riggs and Ralph Ellison there. Though strictly speaking, black is thought of in the chromatic theory of color as either the complete absence or the complete surplus of light. Meaning that the color black has no materiality of its own within this particular theory of color, right? That black is the complete absence of color in terms of light. But of course it exists in pigments, in the actual materiality of putting together the colors. Um, and this is kind of what I'm, 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 I'm working with here, is the kind of presence and absence of the color black and the way that um, Prince and Camille use the color black in all these different ways in this particular period of, um, 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 of, of, of his um, 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 career. Um, so that black, of course, also combines the pigments of all other colors in the materiality of paint. So after walking in the dusky amethyst rains for what seemed to him like an eternity, but only took 17 days, Camille, dressed to the nines and with an exquisitely beat face, grasped, <laughs> thank you, um, I think I'll get through all of this in five minutes. Um, um, that the first element in the periodic, that as the first element in the periodic table of black life, black is the deepest and most durable of shades because it envelops not only multitudes, but everything and nothing. It sounds the otherness of being in blackness. Maybe in finding the color black and staring into the silence of its ain'tness and isness, Camille was finally able to stop trying to imagine what sonic stillness looks like. And not surprisingly, following this particular, um, 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 in terms of Prince's career, um, insight, both Prince and Camille ran up against the still very much operative principle of black life that demands the annihilation and mortality of blackness for black people to exist in the mainstream of the Western world. Prince's specific variant of black feminist was also in full effect in the 1990s when he changed his name in a labor dispute, et cetera, and, um, 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 and um, 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 so on. And um, he took to scrawling the word slave in a very particular way um, on his cheek. Um, and of course, always in the deepest of all hues in black. Um, I would imagine that he used an eyeliner pencil for that because it was Prince. Um, And of course, also in the symbol that we've heard, the love symbol that we've heard um, um, so much um, 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 about. And um, 
And here, this is one of the few times that he spoke or wrote about why he used the love symbol. He spoke about it frequently afterwards, but during the period, what I think is really important is that he used primarily his facial expressions. <clears throat> Instead of words and speech, um, he used not only makeup to write the word slave on his cheek, again, in a very particular way, but also the facial expressions and gestures of what I'm calling here black femme insurgency. His side eye and shade framed so beautifully by impeccably applied eyeliner, the hair fully laid and resplendent with glitter. You can't really see it. It's, a, it's such an amazing image. Um, um, his wrists and his hands draped in the finest of ice, and maybe just maybe it's overkill to say how the letter, do people know how he wrote the letter V, that basically it was only in one line, it was S-L-A-E, and then the V was um, placed on top of it? No, well, I'm, yes. <laughs> black is and black ain't, I guess. Um, um, it's overkill to say how the letter V in the word slave was arranged on his face. It draws attention to the slayage, meaning the homonymic resonances with slay with an A-E and slay with an A-Y, um, inherent in everything that he did. Though that's maybe not really a maybe, since excessive extravagance, excessive black femme extravagance, was Prince's middle name. And he encouraged, he encouraged everyone to never tone down their to muchness. These enfleshed emojis of black femme insurgency gave the artist's protest its moral and political heft, yet at the same time allowed many to dismiss it as hysterical, right? Because this protest was draped in the theatrical accessories of black feminists. And then I will just talk very, very briefly here, um, since my time has run out, that um, A, I want to say that while Prince performed this black feminist, that female-bodied black femme performers are very rarely granted the same licenses that Prince was granted throughout his career in terms of being creative, iconoclast, et cetera, and so on, right? And I mean, one of the things that, that it was actually interesting about Prince is that he is one of the, was one of the few people that actually um, took older black female singers, right, black femme female singers such as Patti LaBelle and um, Shaka Khan and Rosie Gaines um, under his wing in a way that the music industry and the world generally does not, right? Um, and we won't say anything about openly black queer performers, uh, whether female, male-bodied, or non-binary. Um, um, and the other thing that I would also like us to um, think about is why is it that most of the, the best interpretations of Prince's work are by black femme performers, especially singers, um, with, you know, um, I don't know if we want to claim Sinead O'Connor as black or not, but, you know, Shaka, Melissa Morgan, TLC, Stephanie Mills, Beyonce, Jasmine Sullivan, Mariah Carey, Kiki Wyatt are the interpreters of his work, right, um, that are well-known, successful, et cetera, and so on. And finally, finally, as one of the greatest purveyors of cisgendered, heterosexual, male-bodied variant of black feminists, we should not forget that Prince, especially after he became a superstar, benefited immensely and often and, and sometimes violently exercised his heterosexuality. I won't give you um, um, the, um, the examples, particularly during his Jehovah's Days, um, and that he also so effortlessly embraced his status as an elder musical patriarch at the end of his, um, um, his life. And I remember just always looking at him and I'm just like, I just want more from you, right? You know, we already have like all these other dudes. Um, give us, give me something else, right? Give me another prince. Give me another way to be like black femme, queer, et cetera, and so on. And to perhaps not age gracefully, but age excessively. And I think at, at the end of his life, he sort of embraced aging gracefully. And I'm just like, I don't want that from Prince. I just don't want that, so I'll just end there. Thank you all. <laughs>